My name is Peter Romanello. I'm the principal owner and designer of Conceptual Lighting. Um, I'm an architectural lighting designer, independent, uh, which means that I don't sell and supply product. And I'm a full professional member of the International Association of Lighting Designers. Uh, my background, uh, I actually got my degree in theatrical lighting design from the University of Connecticut way back in the early 90s. Um, went and worked for a Broadway designer for a while as an assistant designer. And then uh, after that, uh, went to uh, residential lighting. I uh, worked for a distributor for about five years in Connecticut. And while I was there, I was able to start a design division uh, that was completely separate. And then that actually got to be pretty successful to the point where I just went out on my own. Um, so I've had my own business now for 23 years. And I just, I feel that that lighting is one of those things that, that is um, grossly misunderstood. It's not as complicated as most people think that it is, um, but there, there are certainly differences and, and reasons why a lighting designer or a lighting consultant is an important part of, of, of any project actually, because it's, it's gotten to be where it's not only about technique, but now we have so many differences in technology that make it much, much more difficult. Kitchens are incredibly important and probably one of the most important rooms in an entire house for lighting. And that's because for the homeowners, that is the center of their home. They tend to spend a lot of time there. It obviously is a very multi-purpose space where they're entertaining, they're cooking, they're hanging out, they're relaxing. It's really the, the heart of, of any home. And so the attention to detail with the lighting is, is incredibly important. But that means that, that it actually requires a little bit of thought. And, and so it brings up a lot of potential problems when people don't think about the implications of what they're doing with the lighting. And, and the analogy to a regular kitchen designer is, is that if you're designing a kitchen, you put a lot of thought into where everything goes, what the fixtures are, what the appliances are, what the cabinets are, what the finishes are of everything. And how many times then does that same designer just draw in a bunch of circles on a plan and call that lighting? It, it, it is done without thought and it's done without the, the level of detail that is required. And I, I always tell people that the quality of the lighting absolutely has to be equal to the quality of everything else that goes into the project. So obviously there's a difference between lighting a $20,000 kitchen and lighting a $100,000 kitchen. And if the same mentality and the same approach and the same low quality fixtures are used in the $100,000 kitchen, then that's actually doing a disservice to the client because you're not treating the lighting to the same level that you treat everything else. There has to be a good process when you're lighting a kitchen, as, as with any room. But certainly the most important thing is always thinking about what you need those lights to do. And unfortunately, we, we all work in an industry that revolves around looking at a piece of paper. And, and the, the kind of catch-22 of that is that when you only look at a piece of paper, you're thinking about where lights line up on a ceiling without any thought hopefully and unfortunately not any thought of what those fixtures are actually doing so so i always think that it's important that again regardless of the room but certainly a kitchen you always have to address that question what exactly am i trying to do and, it, and it's really not just a hole in the ceiling so certainly the first thing that you need to do in a kitchen is address your task areas your task areas are obviously your countertops and your island and once you do those, then you have to work your way backwards. And, and the tricky thing about a kitchen then is you have to think about always having some mixture of general light, task light, and accent light. And each source in that room can perform all of those. You know, if you think about an under cabinet light, an under cabinet light is a task light and it's also an accent light. And, and, a decorative fixture over an island could be a task light, it could add to the general light, and it could also be an accent because it's a decorative thing, right? But we always want to think in those combinations. And if you have two of the three, it's really not enough. 
you really have to make sure that you always address all three of those things. You have to think about what is the purpose of the rest of the lighting. And, and the next tool that most people use are recessed fixtures. But this is where the big mistake happens because they tend to be put in a walkway and and the last time i checked nothing happens in a walkway you're literally taking a step and a half and you're going from one thing like the sink and turning around and, and you're at the island so if you light your sink area well and you light your island well then there's no reason to have lights in the walkway now from a plan standpoint you might look at where those fixtures are and notice that they're actually in the walkway on the plan, but on a higher ceiling room, those are actually going to be what are lighting the cabinets. And lighting the cabinets is a really, really important thing um, that, that I think gets missed a lot. So people obviously are putting a lot of money into the cabinets and the selection and the quality of them and the finish and all of those wonderful things. Well, it's actually a disservice to not light them. You need to light the cabinetry. But the, the, the catch-22 of that is that once you start lighting the cabinets, you have to light all of them. You can't have one lit, one in the middle that's not lit, and one that's lit at the end. It looks like a mistake. And, and we kind of, you know, in the lighting industry, refer to those as scallops of light. But you have to look at it then in terms of how do those scallops affect the look of the cabinets. And it looks wrong when you have a dark door. And, and even going past the aesthetic part of it, there's actually a functional need for that. When you open up your cabinet doors, you need to be able to see inside of them to see what you're trying to pull out of those cabinets. So it's really a dual purpose thing. The one thing that I would say absolutely without a shadow of a doubt is that a recessed light where you have an upper wall cabinet is never, ever, ever a task light. And that's because there is no magic distance you could put that fixture between yourself, the edge of the counter, and a cabinet face where you're going to be able to light your countertops. And, and the other thing that people forget is that once you look down, your head now blocks that light and creates a shadow. So anybody that thinks that a, that a recess fixture in front of an upper wall cabinet is adding to task light, they're incorrect because it will immediately be shadowed as soon as somebody looks down at what they're trying to do. Of 100% of projects that are out there, it's literally less than 8% of all constructed projects have a lighting pro professional, not even lighting designer, but lighting professional on it. And so that means that there's 92% of projects that really could use somebody that knows what they're talking about, right? <laughs> so so I've, I've always kind of said, look, there's no way that, that lighting designers could ever take on all those projects. So why can't we make people that are making those lighting decisions do them better? I love food. I, I if my wife always says that if I didn't do lighting design, I would be a chef. And and I remember reading a really interesting book about about cooking. Um, and, and it was actually written by a, a cooking school instructor. And, and she basically said, look, you know, think about your favorite restaurant. Think about your favorite chef. They can do five basic cooking techniques way better than you can. And I'm like, yep, that's it. And so I look at lighting as like, look, if you if you can't master the placement and spacing of recess fixtures, then you shouldn't be doing it. Because you can't you can't fix that after the fact. Those things are in the ceiling, they're never going to move. People will change the furniture, they'll repaint, they'll re-wallpaper, they'll do everything. Those lights are still up in the ceiling. You have one opportunity to get it right. And if you don't know what you're doing, using good basic principles, then then you're actually doing a disservice to your client. So so that's why I've always felt that teaching is so incredibly important because, you know, if if lighting's kind of infective, right? <laughs> or infectious, I should say. Um, probably shouldn't talk about infections with everything going on in the world, but but it is infectious. It's like, you know, once people understand that lighting is incredibly impactful on your home and incredibly impactful on everything else that's being put into that home, then once you learn how to do it right, 
it's kind of like, yeah, I was screwing this up for a long time. And now at least I'm doing it right. And and I think that that, that is really what drives me. It's like, I, I just want to make sure that, that people are doing the right thing for their client.